Michelle Nesky, the Posh PA, and I'm going to answer today for you. What the heck is a PA? Maybe you're new to this channel and you're like, what is she even talking about? I've never heard of this profession. Or maybe you're a student and you're like, how do I explain to my non-medical family what the heck a PA is? Or maybe you're going to be a student going on an interview and you're like, I need to be able to really accurately explain what a PA is and does. If you're in any of those buckets, this video is for you. Let's get to <laughs> it. it. But, but before I do, be sure to smash this subscribe button. I am here every single week, not only giving you information about the profession, but telling you how to get into PA school, be a successful student, and a fulfilled PA. So smash it, smash it. All right, so let's answer this question, right? What the heck is a PA first? You're gonna be hearing two names right now for this profession, if we can't confuse this enough, okay? Physician assistant has been the name for many, 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 many years, okay? Since the late 1960s. However, in the last two years, it has been voted to change the name of the profession to physician associate. So right now you're gonna see some people saying physician assistant or physician associate. I say to be safe, just call it a PA, okay? Make sure you're not saying physician's assistant with an apostrophe S. That is not the name of our profession and you do not want to confuse people, okay? It's physician assistant or physician associate or just keep it simple and say PA. Okay, so what? how do you explain to people what this is? So what I say to my patients, what I say to students is a PA is a nationally certified licensed medical practitioner that can see and evaluate patients, order diagnostic tests, prescribe medications, do minor procedures, and even assist in surgery in collaboration with a physician, okay? So that kind of sums it up very briefly, all right? And I think that in that one-liner, you kind of give people the sense that you know, PAs are highly medically trained, so we have advanced degrees, whether that be a master's degree or a doctorate degree, okay? So we have those advanced degrees. We are nationally certified. We do have to take a national certification exam and recertify every, you know, 10 years. They, they changed it. Um, every 10 years. Um, and you do need to be licensed in the state that you're practicing in, okay? Now, with that being said, the scope of practice for a PA looks different in different specialties and in different states, okay? So the laws for PAs and our scope of practice do differ from state to state. So it's important to know what your state regulations are for PAs. And the best way to know that is by joining your state PA organization, not only for knowledge, but for advocacy and really helping the profession to grow so that we can all be practicing to the top of our licensure. So a lot of times people will ask me, you know, do you see patients by yourself? Yes, you know, I do see patients by myself. Um, I can go in, take the history, the physical, order, order tests, interpret those results, explain them to patients, prescribe medications, and you know, the physician doesn't have to be there, right, all the time. Obviously, if you're a new um, graduate and you're training and, you know, all of those different things. But for someone seasoned like me who's been doing this for well over 15 years at this point, I'm very comfortable seeing patients on my own. And I always have a collaborating physician that I can ask questions to or any of that. So we do function in a lot of ways like an, what is called an advanced practitioner, right? So we are advanced practitioners, we have an advanced degree, and we are in, in a situation where we can practice medicine in collaboration with the healthcare team. So that's what I would say, and I would keep it really simple. Now, as somebody who came from a family where nobody was in the medical field, it was a hard thing to convey to them. They're like, so you're basically a doctor. I'm like, no, like I'm not a doctor, okay? And I don't like it when people say, you do everything a doctor does. Not really true. Like, you know what I mean? I mean, it is true in some ways, but I don't like hearing that or saying that because doctors are very heavily trained. I'm married to one, okay? And that's four years of medical school and a residency and sometimes a fellowship on top of that, okay? So the training is a lot more intense. It is a lot different and they are really pick a specialty and go into it and are really kind of the experts in that field. And so, yes, I do a lot of the day-to-day -day things with patients, but 
I am not a, not a doctor and I would never convey myself as one and you should never convey yourself as one if you are going into the PA profession, okay? And it's really important to think about what path you do wanna take in medicine and if you do wanna go the MD route versus the PA route versus the NP route. I have another video on that here in this library where if you're thinking about should do I want to be a PA? Do I want to be a doctor? I also have a video on NP versus PA, right? So, you know, we are our own profession. And I think it's important to realize the uniqueness of this profession in the fact that it does differ from MD and NP in the fact that we can treat patients in any specialty across the lifespan. And we can move between specialties without having to do additional training. So we don't need to do a residency. However, there are residencies out there for PAs if you know a field that you are just absolutely 100% gonna work in and you want that higher level of training, they're usually about a, about a year after your um, PA program graduates. Um, there are residencies in ER, in critical care, in oncology. So so there's a lot of residencies out there for PAs that are usually a year. You don't have to do them. But it is important to know that the different that is the uniqueness of this profession. Nurse practitioners pick an umbrella, pick a focus, right? Adult critical care, adult this, right? You can stay and move specialties within that focus, but you, you know, in order to go back and work with peds, then you would have to go back and you know be get a PED certification. For a physician, you know, you do a residency and you do a fellowship. And so if you want to change your specialty, you're going to have to do another fellowship or a different residency or things like that. So that's what makes this profession unique in the fact that we can treat patients in any specialty across the lifespan. And I think that's an important thing to highlight to people who really don't understand what a PA is or does, or maybe might say to you, why don't you just do this? right? It's important to stand firm in your idea, but it's also really important to be able to explain to somebody what a PA is and does, particularly if you're in a situation with a patient who doesn't understand what a PA is or does. Um, there have been situations where I have had patients directly ask me like, what, what is a PA? Like, what do you do? And I literally tell them, I am a nationally certified licensed medical practitioner. You know, I have a master's degree from a certified PA program. I can diagnose, I can treat, I can interpret lab results, I can prescribe you medications. I'm in collaboration with my physician. And it really gives them that reassurance on what you are able to do. So a really important question to be able to answer no matter where you are in your PA journey, whether you are just starting out or you're a student or you're about to go into practice, a really important question to be able to answer for yourself. And I hope that this gave you some clarity. Mm -hmm.